What is up, MFers? Hope you guys are having an amazing freaking day. Today's video is going to be totally badass. Went down to Missouri with my buddy Andrew. We caught some freaking tank bluegill and a couple other species as well. Filleted them up, cooked them up, and they were like trophy fish in farm ponds. So if you like the catch and cooks, if you like the pond fishing, if you like the ice fishing, you're gonna wanna stick around for this one. I'm a little sweaty. I just got done working out this morning. I got my bunch of new toys here that I'm playing with. My God, those are gonna be fun to use in some upcoming videos. So I got kind of a call to arms, call to action for you MFers before we start today's video. And that is, I am looking to hire my first ever assistant, an MFN assistant. Some of you guys might've seen the job posting online. For those of you that are not familiar with what I'm looking to hire, I'm looking to hire someone to do some editing for me and that is an expert with social media. To be honest, I'm not really looking to do what a lot of people have done, just hire a cameraman and editor because they, they don't really want to do the work anymore. No, that's not exactly what I have in mind. What I have in mind is putting out about three to four times the amount of content that I'm currently putting out across a wide variety of social media platforms. So if you have experience in cutting up, editing all different types of short form content, and you feel you're an expert when it comes to social media across a bunch of different platforms, producing podcasts, voice, pictures, video, all different types of stuff, then I want you to go down in the description right now. I created a new email account, send me your resume, or just tell me in a cover letter, whatever, why you feel you'd be a great fit for the position. This is going to be a full-time paid position, so I'm looking for professionals only. If you or someone you know wants to help me take this thing to the next level and have the biggest brand in all the entire fishing industry, seems pretty attainable to me, go ahead and send an email to that email right down below with your resume, your cover letter, whatever. Tell me why you are the best fit for that position. So without further ado, let's get down to misery. Catch some giant fish, and I have an amazing recipe. You want to stick around for the end of the video? Let's do it. Well, welcome to Narnia, folks. We are, uh, once again, with, with Mr. Norby over there in the middle of nowhere fishing um, in, in misery, actually. Uh, Missouri, that is. We're, we're not in misery. It is kind of miserable out here. It's about 8 degrees, but at least it's not freaking windy. Um, and, and this pond, is it's a little sketchy. I'm not going to lie. we got 4 inches of ice. Right there's a tube with open water, so we got the old spikes on today, being a little bit careful. But hey, we're gonna do a little bit of catch and cook today, hopefully. We gotta catch some fish. We just got to this pond, fished one this morning that was uh, pretty damn good. I uh, wanna take a couple home to eat though now. We're at a different pond. Hopefully, there's not only giant gills like the last one. I can't believe I'm saying that, but hopefully not just trophy size because you don't ever wanna keep a bunch of trophy size ones, but I wanna keep some some eater size ones because um, I haven't eaten blue yellow. Uh, yeah, let's get to jigging and see what happens. Oh, I already got one. Yep. Deeper water. Oh, that's a big one. It came off. Damn it. All right. Apparently this lake doesn't suck. If you guys watched the last lake, it was uh, big bluegills galores. And apparently there's other good lakes here too. Shocking. Did it. Ah, me too. I got a couple on the screen. There we go. I think they're smaller. Yeah, that's a smaller one for sure. I don't think I'm keeping that guy. But hey, back on the fish. More on the screen. Andrew's hooked up. Uh oh. Things are happening. That one touched it. What are you? Yeah, you're not a crop. Oh, it's a bluegill. It's a beautiful bluegill specimen. That one's going home. He looks delicious. I can tell because of the way he is. That was crazy. He freaking went up and down on the damn screen 192 times. And now he's dinner. There we go. Hooked up. That feels good. Yep. Tanker. Not a total giant, but again, perfect eating size. Probably eight and a half to nine inch bluegill. Hell. Yes, bluegill are like one of my favorite fish of all time to eat. That guy is perfection. There we go. Hooked up again. This guy is not quite big enough, but I love him just, no, I don't love him as much. I love him enough though. He bit today and based on how the fishing's gone lately, I'll take him. I always say that. Oh, I'll take him. It's a decent fish. Well, you know what? I actually will take him today because it has been brutal lately. You know what? It's 10 degrees outside today, but it's not windy, so it feels like it's about 73 compared to the last couple days. Right away. You already hooked up. Already hooked up in the hut with a good oh, oh man. Tank, dude. Look at that. Purple guy. 
Beautiful. Mr. Perp. What do you think? Too big to keep? I'd toss them. We'll catch small ones. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. Bye, bud. Just kidding. Well, oh, there he goes. The big ones can find it easier. Oh, he's that's got sense. it. He's just big. <laughs> Might be a bass. Yeah. Mm, I can't tell. Fire. Yeah, it's a bass. Yeah, that would be one. <laughs> Not a big one, but they feel jack for these gills. Oh, yeah. Bass down there deep, huh? Yeah, man. Oh, there you go. Nice. Dude, bass and okay. gills hooked up, doubled. <laughs> With a, a baby. A baby. Baby guy and a bass fish. That bass could eat this gill. It probably could. For sure. Oh, yeah. Totally could. <laughs> Sweet. He's a long one. He's a long one. Long He's not very fat. Right, Only the gills are eating well, apparently. That is a baby. See, bud. Oh. You're in the oh, oh God. That's a tank. Oh. Look at that fish. That is a good one, man. Gorgeous. So you're saying that's a that's a male gill for sure. Yeah, yeah, because that's a the male. more defined gill plate. It's got colors, purple, purple and, and orange. Uh the females will be kind of greener and yellower. Uh we'll show you a female here when we catch one. Sweet man. Yeah. Yeah, so that guy goes back in the lake. So what we're doing basically conservation wise, Andrew has learned from the local officer at these these lakes that you definitely want to throw back the big males you don't want to take that away the reproduction capabilities in the males so even though it's cool to catch and keep the biggest fish you catch obviously especially with bluegills so you get more meat off of them you definitely want to maintain the fishery so we can be making these videos for you guys next year as well so if you're wondering yeah. why we caught some giant bluegill that you won't be seeing filleted up later here's a female, um, I'll yeah, show let's, you a female. let's see a female females kind of more yellowy um that's one of the ones we kept yeah they're just uh not as bright purple colored right um if you can tell not as much definition yeah. in the yep. tag yeah well we've been uh we've been smoking them here in the hut got the hut set up after a while uh just warm up a little bit heater's not even on but get in here keeping some heat inside it's good let me show you guys what, what i'm seeing on the screen though what we're doing kind of with a with a little tiny teardrop jigs mr fish back on the screen there he is my jigs right above him wiggle it in his face a little bit And he bit. Little guy. Not a big one, but hey, look at that. We got like two, maybe three fish on the screen right there. So let's get back down there. Yep. That would be a smart thing to do. Come by. Big fish in the they did. Yeah, the there he is. Saw him come right on up to it. Oh, Tank, man. dude. <laughs> Tank. Wow. That is so big. That is a giant. That's why you have the fish finder. It's a beautiful thing. Take that all day. Big Juan will definitely have to go back into the lake. Big old male. Big male. Beautiful on the teardrop. Another one. Up. Double we, got up. Double. we got us a double. He's about 40 feet sideways. Oh, that's a big one too. Get out of there. Yeah. Nice. Heck Sweet yes. man, not a giant, but both big males. Big males, Dad. doubled up. Oh, there you he go. Freaking whacked it. Hard to tell how big they are. Yeah. They all get sideways and spin in circles. That's a decent deal, though. Yeah, it's not a bad one. Yeah, he. As soon as he bit, another one rolled in right behind him. It's like they're definitely going two or three or four fish at a time. Well, as you guys can see, we uh, we did decent. We didn't keep the giant, giant gills, but we caught a freaking ton today. Caught some big ones, caught some small ones, caught all sizes of gills, and now it's time to take them home, get them filleted up, and I get to eat one of my favorite all-time fish species. So let's uh, let's get things packed up, go on home, and I will uh, catch you guys there to do some filleting. Okay, MF, we just got back to the house. Time to clean up these big, sexy, nasty slush. Gillians, as you can see, we have everything we need to fillet fish, not including the messy boat that needs to be put back together before we head down south next week and catch some slaunches. But of course, got our uh, our sexy little mess of nice eater-sized bluegill. Got a meat tray, got a gut bag, got a fillet board, got the old, got the room room knife and uh, a messy garage. So I think that's all we need. Let's start filleting some up. Like I told you guys the whole time, these weren't the biggest gills that we caught. We wanted to keep some, uh, make sure we practice some sustainable harvest, and not keep a bunch of big old slaunchy male gills to sustain the population 
for future generations. Now, some of these bluegill can be a little bit tricky to fillet out. This is how I learned to do it. So let me show you guys step by step how to get through this. I know a lot of you guys have seen this before, so feel free to just fast forward, click onto the, the really delicious meal we're about to cook up with these guys as the main centerpiece. But for those of you guys that struggle with bluegills, let's dive in. First thing we're gonna do, go right behind this little this little pectoral fin right here. And we're gonna go right behind the gill, um, this, this gill tab, and we're gonna go right there. We're gonna cut down until we get right down to that spine. Now you don't wanna go through it, that's gonna wreck everything. And then we're just gonna ride that down the entire way down the backbone. And you gotta maintain pressure against the back of the spine the entire way down. If you ride up, you're gonna miss a bunch of meat. If you go down, you're gonna cut through and have a big old nasty problem. Don't worry about cutting through the rib cage. We're gonna get to that in just a second. In my opinion, it's almost impossible to fillet these bluegill without at least cutting through some of this rib cage right here because you're gonna lose too much meat if you try to get around it. Now it's important, before you cut this completely off, I like to leave a little bit of skin there. The reason for that, we're gonna flip it over, just like so, and see how that's gonna hold on there nice, just the same way that this, cl this clasp up here holds on to the front of the bluegill so we can push down on it without it moving around. We got this little skin right here to do the same thing. So we're gonna get as close as we can to where this, this meat starts on the skin. We're gonna ride the knife down to the skin and ride that skin all the way down the filet. go as you can see almost pure skin right there we missed very very little meat one step left to do of course take the rib cage off again we're gonna want to get right down below the rib cage right where it starts and we're gonna pull up the entire way through that way we get as much meat as possible and there you have it right there that's not a giant fillet uh, in terms of game fish of course but that right there is one of the most delicious things ever and that is big meaty sexy bluegill through the ice. Okay, my first got all the gillians flooded up now. We're gonna make a very delicious recipe, something I feel like I got some expertise in, and that is bluegill sandwiches. Now, I've made a couple million thousand fish sandwiches, so I feel like I know what the shit I'm talking about. I don't know much about much, but I can make a good fish sandwich. So I'm gonna tell you guys how I like to turn these delicious looking little bluegill fillets right here into some amazing, amazing tasting sandwich. So in my opinion, a fish sandwich that is excellent, has four different ingredients that make it extremely, extremely good. That is obviously amazing fish. We're gonna use the best, most badass fish batter that I know of using the best method to fry them up. Um, a good bun, so number two, a good bun. You, got, you can't have little tiny hamburger, cheap dollar store bun. You gotta have something a little more substantial with some good flavor to it. Number three, you need a good vegetable slaw. Something nice and tangy that gives a little bit of crunch, uh, a little bit of flavor, and a little bit of tanginess, but not too much. And number four, of course, you gotta have a delicious freaking sauce. If everything in the world is sauces, we're gonna make a spicy, tangy, delicious sauce. It's not gonna overpower that fish, but it's gonna leave a little burn in your mouth. They're gonna freaking like on a nice cold day like we got tonight. Okay, let's do it. We need to get these fish fried up. So we're gonna put a little bit of vegetable oil in the pan, and then we're gonna use my probably favorite batter of all time. The porn stash showed me this, it's absolutely delicious. Shore lunch, good old fashioned shore lunch, not regular, the Cajun style shore lunch. This stuff is the freaking shiznit. Now a lot of people use egg to dip their fish in before they put in the batter. I prefer milk. It's less messy, it's nice even coating. So go fish into the milk, into the batter, coat it into the oil, hot oil, three minutes or so on each side, absolutely delicious. So while the fish is cooking, we need to make the slaw. I like to keep my slaw very, very simple. We're gonna use three very easy ingredients. We're gonna use some red cabbage, we're gonna use a bunch of cilantro, and we're gonna use a lime. And I'm not even gonna tell you guys exact measurements on this. We're gonna dice up this cabbage into some longer, thinner strips, uh, nice and thin. You wanna get about as thin as you want. I probably use about a quarter to an eighth of a head of cabbage for four or five sandwiches. We're gonna use probably a half a bunch of cilantro, chop that up real fine, and then it's up to you. I usually use about a whole lime worth of juice, mix that up really good. It's gonna be a nice, tangy, crunchy slaw. And finally, to top off the sandwich after we got our sexy fish all done crisp on that bun. We get the slaw on top of it, you gotta have some hot sauce. And we are gonna use Wild Turkey 101 hot, no, Wild Turkey 101 does not make hot sauce. Actually, Tube Boy makes this especially for me. This right here is a habanero-based hot sauce. It's freaking delicious. 
great for dipping fish in. It's a little bit runny. So what I like to do with that is of course add some tartar sauce. Mix it together about 50-50, even maybe a little bit more hot sauce. And of course, you gotta put way too much freaking hot sauce on there. Get it dripping everywhere. We're gonna make a freaking mess. Let's see how these things taste. God dang, this burger looks good. Look at that. How could you not want a fish sandwich like that? You got something wrong with you if you don't. But I'm, I'm starving. I've been cooking, I've been fishing all day. I'm ready to eat some damn fish. Right here, make this. This is really good. My slaw kind of fell out, so let's get him back in there. Mm -hmm. Well, sandwich is absolutely epic. Probably gonna end up having two, potentially three of them. I'm not gonna bore you with that process, but uh, yeah, this is good. This I know you can do a lot more with the relish, a slaw, um, everything else you can do with this burger. But to me, you don't want over the power of the fish. You want to taste the fish. Bluegill are one of my favorite fish of all time to eat. So totally freaking jacked. Then we got down there and we caught some bluegills. It is, it's, this is amazing. This is so, so good. If you guys like the Catch Cook style videos, if you like the ice fishing style videos, please drop a thumbs up. Let me know what you want to see more of down below in the comments section. Let me know if you like this one. Of course, go subscribe to Millican Fishing for more videos like this. But thank you so much for watching this video. I'm going to continue to chow down on this delicious food. So uh, I'll catch you very soon. I'm out of here. Peace. I'm not sorry. I can't help this love like mine. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't stop with a love like mine